Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Shali. And, and this, this is GottaSing.com. Your online resource for a better voice. And we're sitting in our wedding portrait position. <laughs> okay, today, we are. this is Friday, so we are talking, it's our Friday rant. We're going to talk about things that we're not going to have a singer, we're just going to talk. And I want to call it the Friday rant, so maybe it'll catch on. That doesn't really work. Um, the thing we're going to talk about today is what can you change about your voice and what can't you change about your voice? There are things that you're born with. You're born with your, your head size and, and your body and the sound of your voice, the, sound, the size of your, of your vocal folds. You can't change those things. They're just they're things you cannot change. We can help you open up the backspace. We can help you place the vowels correctly. We can help you sing the style correctly. But there are certain things you cannot change about the voice. Some of it is like um, your vocal cord length and the size of those vocal cords. They're like little tiny muscles that approximate when the air uh, pushes through them. And if you want to understand that, just look at uh, DVD one. And it shows some medical animation of how those vocal cords work. Now they do stretch back and forth and that's what allows you to go higher or lower. Um, and there are sizes that kind of determine the type of quality or the type of voice you have, soprano, alto, mezzo, etc. Um, but mezzo and alto, kind of the same thing. But anyway, um, you can't change the length of that. And so you have to work with what you've got. Your size of your head, he said. You've got resonators, which are the bones in your head and your, and your jaw and your cheekbones, your skull, etc. Um, those you can't change unless you want to go ahead and have major surgery. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to work with what you've got. Now, what we do is we work with technique. And so if you have a shrill voice or if you have a nasal sound or if you have things like that, those are the things that a voice teacher can work on. But you work within that, that structure that you've got already, that foundation. My voice, naturally, I have a baritone quality. As you can hear, my voice is resonant and a little bit lower. I don't quite have the tenor. And yeah, I'm very loud all the time. Um, and my voice is not quite as flexible. I have about a two octave, a little bit over two octave range. Um, I'm, my vocal folds just aren't very flexible, but where I sing within my range always sounds, it sounds nice. I just don't have a lot of really high notes. Shali's voice, on the other hand, super low to, she can go screaming high, the vocal folds are very flexible. Who knows why? It's just, it's what you're born with. Those are the things that we can't change. We can help you now, like we talked about with, uh, back with Jaren. We can help you sing correctly so we can increase the range of the voice. Most girls usually can sing a little bit higher and have a big range. A little bit bigger range, etc. Yeah. Um, one thing that was always noted about my voice when I was um, not hadn't had any training is that it was pretty, it was flexible, I didn't have a lot of vibrato, I didn't have some of those things that I hadn't learned how to use or develop. But one of the things that um, was noted after I had had some training that I didn't sound so shrill up in my upper range. And so using that backspace, using better breath management, those are the kind of techniques that helped me overcome those things. So it, it didn't change what my voice is. It didn't change the length of my vocal cords or anything. I just changed the way I actually produced that sound so that it was a warmer sound even up in the higher ranges. And this is something that drives us crazy is when someone will come to us and they want to sound like a particular singer. Right. You know, you pick your favorite singer and I want to sound like that singer. We can't make you sound like that. You're you. You, you have your own particular sound. Plus, if that singer's already famous, why do we need another one? We need your unique voice right. to, you know, to become the next big voice. So Let's don't see ever your name on that billboard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't ever try to sound like someone else. Make sure your voice is really unique and make it the best voice you can. And, and that can mean anything. It can mean anything. It depends what your voice is suited for. So now along with this, um, a lot of people t tend to want to put their voice into a voice um, or label their voice, such as you're a soprano or you're a mezzo or you're a tenor or bass. Um, it's important not to allow those labels to be put on you, especially when you're in your youth and your teen ages and maybe even early young adult. Because your voice is going to go through a lot of changes, your body goes through a lot of changes, and because our instrument is part of who we are and, who, and our bodies, there's a lot of changes that happen. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes it changes our vocal cords. Um, women, lots of hormones, and depending if you've had a child or not, and just the age changes. Boys, you're going through a lot of um, actual changes in the voice. And so it's important not to get labeled, and some people will come to us, and they'll be maybe 15 years old, and say, well, I'm an alto. I sing alto in the choir at school. That means nothing to us. Um, 
what, what it means is you possibly haven't trained the upper ranges of your voice, you haven't learned how to go through your passaggio, haven't tr um, increased the muscle strength so that you can negotiate those changes. And so it's very important not to allow that label to stay with you because very likely you'll come to us and you'll find out that you truly are more of a soprano. You ring, your voice rings more in that range, etc. We had a student who came to us who actually had gone through a college program and they told her she was a mezzo. And the very first note she sang out of her voice, we both looked at each other and said, there is no way yeah, you can be a mezzo soprano. because it, yeah. there was no resonance. It was hard for her. It made her voice uncomfortable and tired. And as soon as we brought her range up higher and started giving her repertoire that was in a more uh, soprano range, she actually had ring to the voice. It was easier for her to sing. She could sing longer without vocal issues, etc. And found out that she had been labeled way too early. Yeah, and on the opposite end of that, some people come wanting to be a soprano, but you're actually a belter, and your voice is better as the belting voice. Or guys that want to be a tenor, and yeah. they're actually a baritone. And, so and they're they missing all those nice scream low notes. Yeah. high and then destroy their voice. In the, in the meantime, they should have been working on baritone repertoire and just increasing their range just note by note. So be what you are. You're unique and you should be unique. Your voice should be unique. We need you to be who you are, not someone else. So don't try to be something else. Don't try to be someone. Be what you are and who your voice is. Would it's, you love to see your name up in lights, yeah. not someone else's, and then you're or you're the imitator or you're like someone else? Yeah. How about your voice being that unique voice? So on that note, get in your DVDs and practice. And practice remember, makes permanent. Yes, <laughs> yes, it does. And make sure it's good practice. It's practice of good technique, yes. um, so that that permanent technique is something that will you can utilize the rest of your life. And remember that technique is is absolutely vital. Everything. And if you have a question or you want something to change in your voice, let us know. See ya. My time